remoteness and the geographical distances between places is a biggest challenge. They don't travel to tournaments, so you have 15 kids that play each other all year long. In Kalukchuk, it's a small community, but it's a tight-knit community. So when we have celebrations, everybody's celebrating. When we have tragedies, we all grieve together. I want to come back here in 15 and see you guys being the best player on the ice, all right? It's just a great hockey spirit here in, hockey spirit here in this town. Are you smiling? Are you smiling? Okay, that's good. Uh, this year we have about 40 and 45 kids, ranging from uh, four years old all the way up to 18. They have the ice surface, of course, which is all natural ice up here. There's only, I think, three communities or four that have artificial ice, and that's the bigger centers. But the rest is artificial, so their hockey season may not start till December. In some cases, January. Most places with artificial ice, they're, they're skating on, their, on the ice by like August or September. Whereas we only start in either December or uh, in January, and we don't have that much ice time. It's like maybe three, maybe four months tops. Some parents find it very challenging to have uh, have the money to buy the buy the gear that uh, the kids need. First, you got to get the gear, which can be tougher at sometimes for some people. Like we can't exactly go to Walmart or Canadian Tire. It's limited here. They have kids that want to play hockey, but they don't have equipment. And equipment to ship, it's the shipping cost. It's the most expensive thing is out of reach. It'd be nice to see every kid being able to play hockey because some nights there are kids standing in the stands that you know they're looking and you can see it in their eyes that they want to play but they can't play because they don't have the gear or they just don't have the resources to play. As the Minor Hockey Association we are trying to purchase equipment, basic equipment and we can either hand them out to the, the kids for free and the only thing that we want in return is by the time they're outgrown them, they can hand them back to us and then so other kids can use them. So actually Hockey Canada donated a bunch of gear and we're shipping it to Kagluktuk. So I think we're sending 10 bags of hockey gear, sticks. So now they're gonna get 10 more kids that wanna play hockey on the ice. Not many, not many teenagers that I grew up with had the chance to play hockey. So I just I took it as it was, then I never stopped. Life is good, perfect for me. Kind of a rough start in the high school, but I got through it. Hockey kept me going good, sports kept me going. I feel, I feel like myself on the ice, and now that I have my daughter playing, it helps me feel better. As many kids as possible is basically what I want to see. Right now we've got a pretty good crew. I think it's uh, between 40 and 50 kids participating. You know, there's enough kids in the community where if we can uh, get them on the ice, we can get some pretty good numbers up there and get a good league going for the kids. It's, it's not too big of a community, nor is it too small. Everybody basically knows one another. And when we know that there are people who are struggling financially wise or just trying to get gear for the kids or having even having a, having a ride to bring the kids to the arena. Uh, we've, there's big families, everybody's always willing to help out one another. Everybody wants to see each, uh, uh, see each other succeed. Uh, I really love that about this community.